afternoon, I'm Dennis Galecki, and welcome to the 383rd Imagine Buffalo program, and another virtual Imagine lecture hosted by the downtown Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art and Architecture, History and Nature, or simply Cezanne, and ImagineLifeLongLearning.com. We're going to start with our speaker shortly, but first, a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted during our speaker's uh, presentation, which will last about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. If you have a question, please type it into the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. You'll be able to watch it again later on the library's Facebook and the library's YouTube channel pages. As a reminder, uh, we'll be here on Zoom every Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. with a great lineup of local speakers. Today on the third Tuesday of the month, we focus on Buffalo's history to better imagine our community's future. Our featured speaker is John Montague. John arrived in Buffalo in 1984 to set up SUNY College at Buffalo's Design History Program, where he is now Professor Emeritus. At the college, he was co-founder of the Center for Watercraft Studies. At the time of his retirement in 2006, he helped form the Buffalo Maritime Center, which not only focuses on the collection research and restoration of historic watercraft of the Niagara frontier, but also uses boat building as a vehicle for STEM training, science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. Uh, so that training and community outreach programs. Trained as an art and architectural historian, he has worked as a designer, film animator, illustrator, and boat builder and has been active in architectural preservation and urban planning and heavily involved in Buffalo's waterfront redevelopment and revitalization. Now let's welcome John Montague who will be talking about the Long Shed Project at the Central Wharf at Canal Side. Okay, uh, am I on here? <laughs> You are, Jan. Take it away. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. And again, uh, Dennis, I want to thank you for doing this all these years, uh, uh, keeping these programs going. This is really a, a great asset for Buffalo. Uh, I uh, am really, uh, really uh, excited, uh, uh, of course, uh, over the last weekend, we just opened up the Long Shed. Uh, and uh, let me uh, share uh, some images here. Um, if I can, uh, have you got that now? All right. <laughs> uh, we, uh, as, as you may know, uh, last Thursday, uh, we, uh, we opened up the, uh, we opened up the, uh, the long shed. There was a, a ribbon cutting uh, with uh, uh, various uh, notable characters there from Buffalo that were involved in this. Uh, the, uh, uh, there was a, a, a cover story in the paper, which you, you may have seen, and some of your listeners are probably aware of, of what's been going on down there. But uh, this is a real high point in a long, in a long and, and uh, rather torturous process. Uh, Buffalo uh, has been uh, working on its waterfront for many, many years, and it was one of the first things that I got involved with when I, I came to Buffalo and thought, oh my God, this city has got what an incredible setting this has. So that's been a kind of in the back of my mind, even before I got heavily into the boat, boat issues itself. But uh, what, uh, what we did was to open up the, uh, the, uh, the long shed, which uh, is an absolutely exquisite building. It's, it's beyond our expectations. And after all the, the time uh, we, we, we worked with the architects and with the uh, Erie Canal Harbor developments over developing the plans and design for it and so forth, uh, it, it could not be better. We're really quite thrilled. For those of you who don't know really what this is all about, I mean, people have been watching this thing behind screens for quite a while. Uh, inside of this building, uh, we're going to be building uh, the, uh, a replica of the packet boat, uh, Seneca Chief, which was the boat that opened up the Erie Canal. 
And of course, uh, the whole uh, the whole issue of the Erie Canal is is really quite prominent now because we're heading toward the bicentennial. Which 2025 will be the bicentennial of the opening of the Erie Canal. When October 26, 2020, uh, 1825, uh, Dewitt Clinton, who was the mastermind behind the uh, the Erie Canal, uh, set set out with a, a group of people from Buffalo and other dignitaries uh, in a flotilla. Uh, left Buffalo with a bucket of Lake Erie water, went down the Erie Canal to New York City and off, uh, off Sandy Hook, poured that water into the Atlantic, uh, celebrating the, uh, the, the opening of the Erie Canal and, separate, and celebrating particularly uh, the connection of the East Coast to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the Midwest. Uh, I, for those of you, again, who are not really kind of up to, up to speed, perhaps have not been thinking a lot about the Erie Canal, uh, you'll hear more about that as we progress toward toward the bicentennial. But uh, I just uh, just a quick word of background to this. This was one of the most significant developments in American history, and and in Buffalo, we are really the recipients of much of the uh, uh, much of this history. And and it's certainly it, it's a, it's a phenomenon that actually created and built Buffalo. So it's very significant to us personally and, and as a city and civically and so forth, but also to the world. Uh, what the Erie Canal did was to connect the East Coast, what had originally been at the 13 colonies on the East Coast with the vast resources of the Midwest. That had some good sides and some bad sides, like all, like all historical events, like wars and, and various, uh, various events. Uh, there, there's a, a dark side to this and a positive side to this. Uh, and what we want to do uh, with the, with the bicentennial is to really to commemorate that. We need to raise these issues about what were the issues that, that, that were, what were the good things, what were the bad things? We look at the real picture. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that I think is really significant uh, that, that people really kind of need to understand is that not only did the Erie Canal create Buffalo, Buffalo was only 2,400 people when the Erie Canal opened up here, but it also was really responsible for making New York City, New York City. I mean, New York was smaller than Philadelphia and, and, and uh, uh, Boston at the time. And it was, it was bringing the wealth of the, of the Midwest down to New York City that really made New York City the financial capital. It was also uh, the, the road of immigrants that came up from, from New York City uh, and filled up uh, Michigan, uh, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and, and the Midwest had a lot of effects in the Civil War and so forth. We don't have time to go into the implications of that, but except to remember that this is really a very, very significant event. Uh, and in addition to that, of course, it was an engineering marvel. I mean, people around the world, are, oh my God, no one had ever built a canal this long. And particularly uh, what's amazing about it, it was built by amateurs. People really, he didn't know what they were, know what they were about. They had a problem, they had to figure out how to solve the problem. Uh, we. Uh, uh, that is, a lot of people trace the American notion of ingenuity and self-reliance on, on these kinds of concepts. Uh, but the point was that uh, for Buffalo, that the, the, the goal of that canal was to get to Buffalo. Um, you know, first, Black Rock, there's a big controversy about that. It ended up being Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo kind of prepared the way for it. Uh, Wilkson and some others, you know, made sure that they, the, the, the harbor was, uh, was useful. Anyway, uh, 1825, uh, they dug their way all the way to Buffalo. And the picture you're looking at here from 1825, uh, you can see uh, here's the Buffalo River, Buffalo Creek, it actually was at the time. And down here, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but down here is the Erie Canal coming in uh, and making its right-hand turn, which is now the Explore More is right here. Uh, the uh, Naval Park is right here, going down here and meeting the river. So that point right there is the, what I like to call the sacred site. This is the point where the water of the lakes and that whole vast system uh, of a thousand miles into the center of the country is connected with, uh, with uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Now, uh, this, uh, as I said, Buffalo was only a city of about 2,400 people at the time. Uh, within, about, uh, within about years, uh, it was up to about 40,000. Uh, after that, it jumped to 80,000. All of a sudden, this was clearly a bustling center where trade people were coming from the east with manufactured goods, with immigrants going from the west with raw materials and so forth. And then all along the, all along the Erie Canal, towns were popping up. 
but all of this had to be funneled through Buffalo. So Buffalo became really the, the, uh, the, the axis of, uh, of this whole Western development. And consequently, uh, it, made, uh, it made fortunes for many, many people. It created many businesses. Uh, you know, people talk about uh, uh, Wells Fargo and Bank of America and so forth, all kind of coming out of this, uh, uh, this uh, tremendous commercial center. What you're looking at here is a representation of, of the, the, uh, uh, the central wharf. Uh, which is now where Canal Side is now. I mean, once it's open, on one end is going to be the carousel, and the other end is going to be uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, center where we're building the boat. Uh, here's another view of it. You can see here's the central wharf down here, uh, running along here. It was a wonderful kind of New Orleans style, uh, uh, sometime triple veranda. Uh, here's the the corner where the where the um, uh, the commercial slip comes out and joins the river. That's that sacred spot I'm talking about. This is where the Naval Parks is today. And this is a building, we'll talk about this a little bit later, hide, hidden behind this smoke coming out of the chimney here. Uh, that's where the, that's where the uh, uh, long shed is. Uh, Buffalo Creek was relatively narrow when it started. It was eventually because the harbor needed to be larger. Uh, they, they cut another channel, the ship channel on the other side, leaving several islands in the middle, which they cut through. And this, of course, was great for cross-loading. The big ships would come in from the lake. Uh, they would transfer onto canal boats. The canal boats would then go down, uh, down the uh, commercial slip, make a left-hand turn, and head, uh, head to Lockport and to, uh, and to New York City. Uh, so there, there was, uh, through the 90s, so the late 80s and 90s, and even well before that, there, there was an interest in somehow reviving the, the, the neighborhood, reviving the, 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 the waterfront. Uh, and uh, this had been, um, the area had kind of fallen into decay. It had, uh, when the commercial traffic uh, uh, ended, uh, Buffalo went, had a number of downturns. Of course, this became kind of a neglected area. When I came to Buffalo in 84, I was thrilled to see that Buffalo was a waterfront city. I mean, I'd grown up on the water and, and, and I just, uh, I had not been so aware of that until I, I got out on a sailboat and looked back at the city and saw, oh my God, this place is, looks like Oz from the water. Uh, so I became very interested early on in, in all of these projects. And by the late, uh, the mid nineties and so forth, uh, many of us were planning on different ways that we could, we could access the water uh, uh, of the Maritime Center, which I was heavily involved with at that time uh, uh, and still am. <laughs> Uh, was always looking for a place. Where could we have access to the water? Where could we kind of uh, get involved with this? And of course, we were going at that time through the early stages of the archaeology uh, of finding where the canal actually was. It had been buried. Uh, and there were a lot of controversy about this, about digging it up. And you may remember some of those stories and so forth. But uh, that did actually uh, turn into this. Uh, and this became... Uh, you know, by, by uh, you know, the, the year 2000, 2001, two, this became uh, a real center for, uh, uh, for, for focus. And when the Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation was developed and how are we gonna, how are we gonna deal with this land? What are we going to, how are we going to uh, approach this? Uh, many of us in, in the kind of preservation community and with historical interests and so forth said, this, this, is, a, this is a gem here, that we've got something here which we really need to exploit. And that is the history, the core history of, of Buffalo and actually the core history of, of the nation. So this, uh, and I just wanna point out that this view, we're looking from the, the, the canal side uh, bridge there, the waterfalls looking toward that, that spot where the canal touches or runs into the river, the Buffalo River, that's the sacred spot right there. That's the place, that's the, you can draw a circle around it. That's where the East Coast met the Midwest uh, and, and we basically had nothing there before. We have just, not, you know, just, this is, this is where the canal comes out. Uh, so that seemed to be a place to, to build around. And so we've, uh, through various committees with, uh, with the uh, Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation and, and the different civic groups and, and, and so forth, uh, we started working the, the history of this area. Um, we were able with, uh, with cooperation of, uh, of, uh, of ECHDC to keep some of our historic boats down there. I mean, here you can see the some uh, War of 1812 bateaus. We have our electric boat down here. Some of our historic boats. The uh, the Hillmans came into town with the uh, with the um, uh, uh, the spirit of Buffalo, which adds a, a wonderful kind of visual to this. Uh, and um, so for for 
many years now, we have been using this as a, uh, the, the canal slip as a kind of a historic uh, uh, pictorial uh, setting. Uh, and this is the kind of thing we wanted to promote. Uh, we had done uh, uh, plans for, uh, uh, the, again, submitted to, to the various powers that be and the various planning agencies and so forth uh, to try to develop this whole area as a historic site. Uh, or at least have at least have the ambiance of, of a historic setting and try in some measure to kind of recreate without obviously replicating but uh, uh, complement the the historical setting and 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 atmosphere and environment uh, this is a drawing I did uh, uh, early on, uh, we had a plan working with a, a local developer to develop these buildings along the side that used to be there and trying to work out uh, uh, programs where we could have, uh, you know, restaurants, retail and historic um, um, museums, literally kind of woven out. This is over the ruins um, uh, over on the, the, uh, the, the south side of that, uh, which would be up to visible by people with a, a kind of a dance hall up above. But if a main feature of this, or a serious feature of this, was the idea of, of putting in canal boats uh, or having some historic boats that were directly related to this, uh, to this, uh, uh, this scene. Uh, and this was a drawing I did earlier. I think, well, we ought to have a packet boat, which is a, a passenger boat. We ought to have a freight boat. We still think this is true. Uh, we still think we should do this. Uh, but so people would come down and they'd get some sense of what this was. Now, our idea was from from a marketing point of view that this would be a, a great way for the city to kind of focus on what it was, focus on its origins, focus on its identity with the Erie Canal. Uh, that was something unique that Buffalo had. So that's something unique that Buffalo could do. I mean, if you ask uh, you know, people in Charleston, South Carolina, like what, what's Charleston, South Carolina all about? They show you that row of houses on the battery. You know, I mean, uh, cities have identities that are, are focused on something something very specific and you something photographable. So we set about uh, continuing, as you've been doing this for a long time, but continue to work on research on, on uh, Erie Canal boats and particularly the packet boat. We thought a significant boat to build would be if we could find out information on, on DeWitt Clinton's boat that was built in Buffalo called the Seneca Chief by Thaddeus Joy, one of the builders of the, of the uh, the waterfront, uh, one of the builders of the of the uh, commercial wharf and so forth. Uh, Thaddeus Joy built this boat on uh, on a on a little creek that was right under where the uh, uh, the hockey rink is right now. So that seems significant. Let's let's try to build that boat. So we got as much information as we could. We've actually been researching this. Well, I've been working on this from probably since about '95. Uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, not a lot of information on this, but much of this can be much information can be implied and drawn from from uh, from various uh, various drawings, uh, uh, verbal descriptions, and so forth. I just want to show you some examples of that uh, kind of research. Uh, you know, the, there are lots of varieties of boats, but but uh, by putting them all together, this is before photography, of course. So uh, uh, there weren't there weren't any uh, photographic images that we had. Uh, Photography doesn't come in until the 1840s. I mean, several years after the canal was finished, so it, you had to do a lot of interpretive work from from images of uh, drawings and and so forth. Eventually, what happened was um, there there were all kinds of other issues going on at the uh, Erie Canal Harbor uh, and at, at Canal Side, uh, and they were just not ready to do this kinds of pro projects. We were uh, seduced to. Uh, 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 to Lockport, uh, who wanted to build a packet boat up there. So we went up there. They actually ended up with a grant they had uh, to actually pay for finished drawings of a canal boat, which is, uh, which is what, we, what we did. We thanked them for that, and we're still partners with them in this, uh, in this whole project. We uh, uh, then, uh, having uh, plans, uh, uh, which were, you know, Coast Guard approved arch uh, naval architectural drawings and so forth, we were able to start actually working on the boat, even though we didn't have a, a place to put it yet. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, Lockport uh, project kind of fell through, but we built another boat for them. We built a 50 foot boat that they, they're using in the flight of fives when they're doing the restoration of that. So we're back to Buffalo with our plans. Uh, and uh, so let me just show you, these are some of the projects. We have to draw the boat full size. Uh, from the full size, we, we build up the backbone. Uh, we build, we cut out all of the parts and so forth. Basically, this is a puzzle of how the whole thing's put together. Then uh, uh, 
uh, in a couple of years, we end up with the finished boat. Uh, so we have all of this, we have the plans, we have the know-how, we have uh, at the Maritime Center, we have two, uh, uh, two uh, expert uh, professional boat builders uh, know how to do this work. Uh, plus uh, from, the, from uh, uh, the Lockport experience, we have a, a set of volunteers, probably, probably 40 volunteers plus others. And I, I will say one of the things that we really wanted to do uh, we wanted to make this a public project, just as we did with the Lockport project, get as many people from the community working on this as possible and having a hand in it. Uh, so that was the kind of situation that we were in. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we were trying to figure out a way to kind of get this, uh, this built down at, uh, at Canal Side. This seemed to be the obvious place to do it. Uh, so we were looking for inexpensive building. Maybe we could just build a temporary building like one of these uh, you know, uh, uh, temporary sort of ugly metal buildings, get the boat built inside, take the building down, unbolt it, move it somewhere else uh, and launch the boat. Um, so that was, uh, that was kind of the state that we were in. We had sort of dis determined uh, that uh, there were basically in an ideal world and we thought we were just dreaming at this time, uh, there were like three locations we could do it. The ideal place would be right here next to the sacred site. Uh, or in one of the fields over here somewhere under the, uh, uh, under the skyway or over the ruins. Uh, and we did a, a number of permutations of, of, of building over the ruins and keeping the ruins open for interpretation and so on. Uh, one idea that came up shows you how kind of wildly and wide, wild, widely we were thinking. Uh, there was some indication that maybe the Naval Park uh, uh, wanted to unbolt and, and uh, dismantle uh, its, uh, its uh, hangar building. Uh, the red building behind the Naval Park. So uh, I did a drawing here of setting up a platform, building it on that, and then again, moving it after the project was over. Uh, then something magical happened. Um, and and uh, again, you have to understand the complexity of all the forces that were going on here to uh, uh, in, in this context, in this situation, um, we, uh, I mean, the Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation had all kinds of things uh, uh, on, its, uh, on its plate, uh, uh, all kinds of forces moving around the city, the state, the, you know, uh, uh, other, other groups, uh, developers, and so forth. I mean, a, a little, literally a nightmare of complexity. Uh, and then here we come with, uh, with these this plans for, for building a boat. Uh, well, in the middle of all of that, uh, we uh, we started sort of working uh, working the the, the, the public uh, uh, the public communication. We wrote articles about this, trying to promote the idea, trying to get some ground swell of of interest from the community in this because of its importance in terms of the heritage of Buffalo, uh, giving a focus to the to the, the canal side and so forth, uh, and. Uh, so in the midst of our doing that, um, I, I wrote a, a couple of articles and, and several articles were written in the paper. Uh, factually, the, 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 the board of the uh, uh, Buffalo News got on board. Uh, this was a good idea and basically said, you know, I think you ought to build the boat. Well, this fella right here uh, uh, happened to be, uh, happened to read those things in the paper and came by one day to the boat shop in our, our boat shop up in Black Rock. Uh, and um, long story short, uh, he says, I'll pay for the boat. Uh, and of course our jaws dropped. So said, oh my God, you know, can this possibly be? So when we finally recovered ourselves and pulled ourselves back up on the chairs, uh, we, uh, we immediately called around uh, to kind of announce that we have the money to build the boat. Uh, and uh, and that, uh, that appealed to a lot of other people who were kind of on the fence about this. And they said, okay, let's do this, let's, let's, let's do this. So uh, we had uh, uh, some other sources that, that came in and uh, it looked like it was a, it was a going concern. Uh, and, and then it was at this point too that, uh, that we, were, um, we were looking for where to put the boat. Uh, and I have to say, we were just thrilled that, uh, that uh, Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation came and said, you know, uh, that's a good idea. Let's, you know, build a boat and build it there. I said, really? Okay, that's great. Uh, uh, and they said, and not only that, they said, we'll build the building. We want to do this thing right. We want to do the right thing. We don't want, you know, some temporary building going to just, you know, trash and throw away uh, when, the, when it's done. So they, they incorporated this into a larger image and a larger project. Uh, and that's where, uh, that's where things really, uh, really took off. The next question was, what's the building supposed to look like? Uh, what, what are you going to build on that site? 
Uh, and, and here was where, you know, we, we had to deal with kind of historic issues. We're trying to create this historic ambiance for, the, for, the, um, for this area. This is a critical piece of, of the history. Uh, so we went back to kind of looking at, at uh, the, the images of what kinds of buildings were on this site in, in, in 2025. Uh, and, and in here, if you, can, if you look at this, this is the canal coming in. Uh, uh, to the right, it was much wider here because that was kind of a marshy area that was open. And right about there is where the, the end of the slip is now. Uh, this is a bill, I just highlighted that building to kind of, so you could see where that was. So that's where we were going to build the building. But what is it gonna look like? Uh, so uh, we went back and looked at as many historical images of book buildings that were on that site. Um, this one, this is the building over here. There's the commercial slip coming in here. Uh, here's a, another representation of it. That's the building that would later become uh, the, the uh, uh, Naval Park. Um, so uh, as, as we were drawing pictures of trying to work out the details of what we needed in the building and so forth, kind of came up with some rough ideas of this, uh, this uh, building with the, the traditional uh, 19th century false fronts on it. Uh, well, at that point, uh, Hamilton House and Lowney, who were uh, 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 under contract with the uh, ECHDC, the architects uh, uh, set to work on the building. We had long discussions and conversations with them about size, about what we needed and, and so forth and so on. And, and these are just some of the working drawings of that, how we, we spent hours kind of working this over. We wanted more space, they, you know, cutting in, cutting out and so forth, all the kind of compromises that are necessary in that kind of a project. And they came up with with uh, this plan, which was absolutely fabulous, and uh, everybody was on the same page, and I have to compliment Hamilton House and Lowney for the, their 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 grasping of the concept of this building with this kind of uh, historic uh, uh, overtones and so forth. Uh, everything fit together, and again, what could be better than to be on that site at that point when you're trying to make. Uh, a historical point or create a historical ambiance. This is the building under control, uh, under construction. Of course, it was a uh, much was uh, slowed down by by uh, by uh, the COVID ep epidemic. Uh, but uh, uh, here it is. Uh, I think this was in late July uh, or early August. Uh, and uh, as we made visits to the building during the process. Uh, I was, I was, and my colleagues were like overwhelmed with the quality of the building. I mean, it's like, uh, and if you go down to, to visit it now, you will, you'll be aware of this. Uh, and I felt very positive about this in the sense that one of the things we're teaching and we're doing with the boat itself is emphasizing and focusing on craftsmanship. And to be in a building that is actually built with such a high level of craftsmanship was quite, quite a fortuitous. Uh, this is another view of it. Uh, the uh, and, and also the quality of the materials in it. I mean, my my colleague uh, uh, said that he would just he just uh, drools to see this this all this uh, cedar siding without a single knot in it. It's like that's boat building material. It's almost a waste to use that on a building because it would seem, be so good in a boat. Anyway, uh, here are some images of it. This is the interior of it for the opening. Uh, we're just moving in. We just started moving in on uh, a, a, a week ago. Wednesday, yeah, Thursday, Wednesday. Uh, and we have set up the keel for the boat. Uh, that's much of this has been done at the shop already and set up one single center section of the boat. And this is, uh, uh, you can see this uh, uh, here, the, the, uh, up above here is a gallery uh, uh, where people can come in and visit as the project is going on. They can talk to people working on the boat. We're gonna get as much interaction as possible on, uh, on this. This is uh, that, that gallery. Uh, you can get a sense of the, the floor space. They put in a floor here that this floor can be taken up. I mean, we can mess up the floor as much as possible over the next couple of years. And uh, then it can, uh, it can uh, uh, be taken up and, and restored if the building needs to be used for something else. We'd like to build another boat in it uh, after this, this finishes. But this is going to be uh, the, the product. Uh, and when, uh, when we finish the boat, we're going to take about two and a half years to build the boat. So about... Uh, uh, 20, 2023 or so, uh, the boat will be launched. We'll launch it right next to the building there. And the plan is that we're gonna take this boat down the Erie Canal uh, and we are going to uh, uh, work a, a lot of the little towns kind of showboat version the sort of spirit of taking the spirit of Buffalo down, uh, down the canal uh, and then uh, preparing people for the bicentennial. And then the, 
the, the ultimate um, uh, commemoration will be doing a reenactment of uh, the opening of the Erie Canal, the wedding of the waters. And as I like to say, the governor, we'd like to have the governor on board uh, as DeWitt Clinton was, whoever she might be or he might be. Um, and uh, so that will, be, uh, uh, that will be a kind of a reenactment of the wedding of the waters. And then the boat will, will basically be an iconic piece of Buffalo's heritage and, and something that we will use for, for, uh, for years to come, uh, working, uh, working back and forth along the canal. We're also looking to the, the uh, 2025, the World, the International World Canals Conference. Uh, we're hoping to hold that in Buffalo and this will be a critical piece of that. So I'll leave it at right at there. I think I probably, but I almost got it under time there. Uh, uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to answer it. Good. John, that was outstanding. Uh, Melissa, do we have uh, any questions that you've seen from the audience? Yeah, Dennis is, or um, John actually is, so is this long shed building now open to the public? When can people come visit? Well, it's actually, it's, uh, we, we, we had it open to the public on, uh, on Saturday. We had a kind of a public visitation on Saturday. Uh, we are now, uh, we're now getting our act, we, we are sort of half moved in. We're still moving machinery in, we're still moving uh, materials in and so forth. Uh, but I, I would say uh, probably in a, in a couple of weeks, we'll be having regular visits. Uh, we are, we're, working, uh, we're working on, uh, on a, a volunteer with volunteer coordinators to figure out how we can incorporate uh, people work. We have a lot of people already signed up that want to work on the boat. Uh, and that will be kind of one category of people visiting. Uh, the other is that we are still kind of finishing off the gallery up above, which will be a visitor's gallery. Uh, you'll, you'll enter by the door on the north and go up onto that mezzanine. You'll be able to talk to people down below and so forth. So that will be, that will be open fairly soon. Uh, and uh, uh, we're trying to just uh, get, get our act together. Uh, <laughs> we're still recovering from the opening itself. Uh, but um, the idea is down the road, we're, we want as many people to pass through this as possible. One of the brilliant things I must say about the design of the building is that it has windows all the way around. So uh, you don't need to feel like a peeping Tom by looking in to see what's going on. And as much as possible, we'll have those doors open so people will be able to, to, uh, uh, to see what kind of activities are going on. Uh, one of the things I should add to this is, uh, speaking to visitors, is that one of the things we want to do with this project is that we want to uh, we want to do something similar to what Buffalo did when the Amistad, the, the slave ship, came to Buffalo. Uh, and they had the banks involved. They had the universities involved, the public schools. They had the libraries, had, had uh, everybody reading the same book. Uh, there were discussion groups and so forth. There was like a, a groundswell of community activity focused around this subject. And we think this this can be uh, this project can be that kind of uh, that kind of experience. So we're looking forward to doing that. We're, we've got 2025 is sort of the 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 the, the big uh, the big move, but a lot's going to happen in the area before that. You know, uh, time becomes uh, precious here in this short half hour. Uh, this this project, John, uh, I see is central to next year not just uh, 2025, but next year's 200th anniversary bicentennial of Erie County. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and as such, I hope to have you back in the uh, late spring and bring us up to date. Is that a deal? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, and then, uh, then we can cover uh, this. In the meantime, uh, folks, uh, certainly check out uh, the website for uh, uh, our speaker and uh, uh, share this with your friends. I'm gonna thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we so appreciate this new format and thank the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library again for hosting this virtual Imagine program. Join us next week, same time, same Zoom link when we talk to Kara Prasanna, uh, Communications and Development Manager at Western New York Land Conservancy we're going to hear about the College Lodge Forest Project uh, in Chautauqua County, just outside of Fredonia. So please alert your friends and networks interested in the Imagine Series fourth Tuesday theme of nature and science. I'm Dennis Galecki. Be well, be safe, and have a good day.
Thank you, Dennis. You're welcome, Jan. Thank you.